Hey everybody, welcome back to the dark road. Let's keep buying and selling. Okay, so I did look it up and yes, this wasn't supposed to refill until the end of the turn. So if I'd wanted to take the other crown objective, I would have had to take this one. Anyway, this refills, a new companion comes out, an adorable little ice mouse. Oh, look at me, so cute. To join us in the future. And, um, right, oh, and my dice. This one goes into my discard pile. This one goes back into the supply. And I am finally done. That was a very big turn. And I've got plans for the future, too. But in the meantime, it is now my opponent's turn. Let's see what they've got in mind. Okay, so it's like they they took a one. They are going to move to here. So they move here. So that means they have access to the bazaar and the inn. And they want to go to the bazaar. And if they can't, they'll go to the inn instead. But before they do that, they get a lantern. So, hooray! Now, they never use lanterns for um, re-rolls or anything like that. But if they get three lanterns, if they launch a mission, they will always take the shortcut if they can. The same way a player can spend three lanterns to take a shortcut. So, now, he says, hey, I want to go to the market. If I have three or fewer goods, then he's going to rotate the wheel, which is something that players can do when they visit the market, and buy um, guns, armor, and potions. Okay, so remember, he is down to only one good, so he is going to do this. If he had more goods, he'd skip that, and instead he'd come and try to sell goods at the inn nearby, because that's the main way you make money in this game, is selling to these heroes. But instead, he's going to buy some goods. So the first thing he does is he rotates the wheel, and I have to shout in agony, because now my book just went from being worth five bucks to being worth four bucks. He just undercut me. And my other thing, my staff, just went from being worth th two to one buck. I was just about to come over here and sell those things, and he just took two bucks right out of my kids' mouths, this guy. All right. I mean, as you can see, when a player visits the bazaar, they have the opportunity to rotate the wheel. They also can manipulate the dice, and then they buy stuff. So, he will always rotate the wheel, and then he will buy. He will buy, um, wherever he can, guns, or, or, or however many there are, of guns, armor, and potions. Interestingly, there... Oops. Hey, hey what, what is going on here? All right. Oh, this bumped. I bumped this somehow. There we go. So, he is going to buy guns, armor... And potions. All right. And now, if he were a human player, he would have to pay three bucks plus two bucks plus one buck. He would have to pay six bucks for all this. But, you know, the trader, he has mysterious ways. He just gets the stuff without actually paying. And he, remember, he doesn't care what types. Of, I care what types of items because I've got specific commissions. He just has a general purpose of goods. So he just got. One, two, three goods. He now has enough stuff to sell to these people. All right, and, all right, so he did that, and uh, that was that. So his turn is over. This goes into the discard pile. And at the end of any player's turn, once they've gone to the market, whatever they bought, those dice get re-rolled, and added back. So now there are two staffs and two weapons available to buy. Now, potions and armor and books can't buy those anymore because the market is constantly fluctuating. That was his turn, and I shake my fist because I was totally going to come and sell my book and my staff to Ida, who, ugh, I'm probably going to do it anyway, but I just basically, I, I lost out on two points because I could have made two more bucks. Um, uh, right. But anyway, so it is my turn. And once again, I have to choose. Am I going to move three steps, five steps, or three steps? But remember, I've got horseshoes, so I could turn that into a two or a four, or I could turn that into a four or a six. Right. Well, I've all, in addition to thinking how far I want to move, I have to think, am I going to try and forge something else? Am I going to give myself another lantern? Because once i got three lanterns, I can take shortcuts. Or am I going to use my brand new um, illuminated die so I can do another double action? Or am I going to do this? This is the, mo the arguably the boring one. Get two bucks or rotate the wheel once. It gets better if you upgrade it because then it means get three bucks or one fame. And that becomes a bit more attractive. Although, you know what? Hey, sometimes you just want to move that wheel once because you're about to buy or sell. Oh. No, actually, in this case, uh, moving that wheel once would make things even worse. Books would go down to three, and the and the staffs I'm trying to sell would still be one. So, if 
you know, it, 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 you can imagine if this wheel were in a different position, if the staff, if if I could move it two so that I could make these staffs work five bucks, yeah, then I would go on ahead and do this to rotate one more time. It doesn't make much sense to do that right now. If I um, if I do this, then I will either craft a gun or a gun. I can see that because I have to put this one or this one in. So you can, this is a reminder, hey, whatever you put here, that's what you craft. So I would craft a one. And forgive my really sloppy, this is supposed to represent the universal symbol for any basic good. I had to write in with a Sharpie. Uh, remember, it's a prototype. So if I do this, I will make a gun, which I could maybe sell to somebody. Guns are only worth three bucks to sell right now based on the, uh, on the market. Or I could give myself a lantern or do a double action, or I could get make a couple bucks. Hey, you know, sometimes a couple bucks is a couple bucks. Now, here's the deal. I do, I'd originally planned on wanting to come here, even if that meant I had to use a horseshoe. But remember, I could go two, one, two, which means I would have to use a horseshoe in one of these threes, and then I could sell here. So that was my plan because Ida wants books and wants, uh, and those used to be, that I could have made. In the old days, seven bucks off of this sale. Now I will only make five bucks, which still isn't bad. But more importantly, when you sell something to one of these heroes, they say, hey, good on you, mate. We would like to become a passenger and head back home. And that's how you get passengers that you can deliver and get all kinds of bonuses. Also, every time you get one of these passengers, they come with a particular bonus. Ida here has more storage. So I can carry one item, no matter how big it is, on her card. Uh, meanwhile, what is it? Uh, uh, Idram here, he would give me another horseshoe. Again, prototype. And there's a, what's the third one? Oh, uh, is the third one getting crystals? I think? No, the third one is getting lanterns. So they come with different things. Right. So do I still want to do this? Because I'm going to make less money than I thought I did. And I didn't mind using one of my horseshoes when I was going to get a really good return. Now I'm just going to get an okay return. If I move three steps, uh, if I move five steps, I'm just going to stay right here. And that means I could do a double action. So I could visit the dark market. I could go on another excursion. Or instead of going on an excursion, like you saw before, I could visit the local ruins. Which means I can find magic items. And if I spend a lantern to dig deeper, I can roll the ruin die and get even more stuff. That's if I stay here and not go on travel, but instead go to the local ruins. Or I could visit the dark market again, spend some money, and get a couple of items. Hmm. All right, that's if I go with a five. I think... Or if I just go three, then hey, I can get another commission because I'm here. Or I can go to the Great Bazaar again. And remember, I've got this, so I could do a double action. I do... I, I think I am going to see that one. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to move. I'm using one of my horseshoes. Two. One, two. Hey. Hello. 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 There. Yeah, I'm going to stare off. Okay. All right. So, and I've got to put this here. It's the only thing I can. So that means I just made a gun. Boom. Not, unfortunately, a magic gun, but a regular gun. I got plenty of room for that, though. No big deal. And um, so I have arrived and now I could either buy I could buy stuff at the bazaar, like you saw how the, the opponent did, or I can sell stuff to these folks. Unfortunately, I cannot visit the Oracle um, because, I, again, I didn't use my, my uh, illuminated die. So, well, now I've got a gun. I've got a gun, a book, and a staff. And guns sell for three, while staffs only sell for one. And, well, Idrim here... Does anybody want a book and a gun? No. If somebody wanted a book and a gun and a staff, I would totally sell to them. But that is not what uh, people are looking for here at the inn. So I could sell to Idrim my staff and my gun. I don't have any armor. And I would make three, I'd make four bucks, but I'd get a horseshoe. And hey, this guy wants to go to Curse Cairn, which is another place I eventually want to go. So that's pretty cool. Or I could go to Idra and sell the staff in the book. I'll keep the gun and I will get more storage space. So do I want a horseshoe and less money or do I want more storage and more money? And two with one, I think I am going to go to Windglass. So I'm, I'm going to stick to my original plan, uh, which means if I've got books... Now, if I had magic stuff, when I sell magic stuff to them... Remember how when I delivered magic stuff out to the village, you get an extra fame? When you sell magic stuff to these people, you get an extra dollar and a crystal. 
which is a way that you can bribe your traveling companion, your familiars. So anyway, so I'm going to sell to him, I or her, I think, and I've got the staff, I've got the book, and that gives me four, five bucks, which hopefully means I made five points at the end of the game. This goes into my secret coin purse, and um, this person joins our merry band of uh, travelers and comes up there. Okay, so now I've got two people of a total of three. I can have up to three. Although, if you if you want to get somebody else, you can dump an existing passenger and get another one. But now I've got two people waiting to go to Windglass. And as you recall, when I go to Windglass... Uh, well, no, you don't recall. For every person I deliver safely home to Windglass, you get two fame. So I've got four fame sitting up there. I've got more storage. I just made five bucks. So... Um, but unfortunately, since I didn't sell a magic item, I did not get a crystal plus an extra dollar, sadly. All right. But, you know, hey, that's how you make money. And remember, I got those items for nothing. They were just kind of incidental things. So I just made money out of nothing. And um, that was it. So uh, at the end of my turn, another one comes out. And now let's see what Trader is up to. Trader wants to, basically, it's like he just played a four. He's going one, two, three, four. He's coming back down here, and he wants to sell. Remember, he just got goods. He is now going to sell those goods the same way I did. So the way this works is, again, a typo. If he has three or more, or no, first of all, he moved here, and now, um, if he has an illuminated die, he will spend it. In the same way that I can use illuminated dice to do double actions, as you saw earlier, he can use illuminate. If he didn't have an illuminated die, he would make two bucks. But since he does have an illuminated die, he gets two goods. So he spent his illuminated die and he got two goods. So that was like the, the extra action he did. One, two. So now he's got six things to sell. And he... So that's more than three. If he didn't, if he had no stuff, he would instead go to the dark market and get another commission. But instead, he is going to sell. Now, he wants, wherever possible, to sell to somebody over here at the inn that matches existing commissions and heroes that he already has. Because he, like a human, like you just saw me, I tried to get more people going to Windglass. If he already had somebody going to Curse Cairn, he'd want to sell to somebody going to Curse Cairn. Now, as it is, he has no targets right now. He has no commissions. He has no um, existing passengers. So that means he will decide based on this. He will sell to Orna over here, the one in the top left, and he will sell everything. So um, Orna wants... Because remember, he just has a virtual representation. He's got like a bunch of gen general goods that will do anything. So Orna wants a musical instrument, a gun, and a potion, and that's what he's going to sell. One, two, three things, and he just made, let's see, what, what is the state of things? Musical instruments, five, plus guns, three, plus potions, two. Oh my gosh, he just made ten bucks. That's the way you do it. That's how you sell. All right, so he just made ten bucks, which again, might be ten points to him, depending on whether his fame or his money is uh, the lowest at the end of the game. And now, Orna joins. And now he's got a target. He wants to travel to Far Glen to deliver Orna as a passenger. After making all that crazy money, Orna decided to go home. And he said, "Get hop on, Orna. We'll get there in no time. So that was a pretty good turn for him. Much better than... Well, I mean, hey, I, I made five bucks. And, uh, yeah, that was not quite as good. Um, anyway, so, uh, right. And so that was it for him. He uh, did a very simple thing. His turns were always very simple. And uh, we refill... These refill automatically. These and these don't refill to the end of the game, but these refill automatically. All right, so it is my turn. I can move one, five, or three steps. So if I stay at five, I can say, no, I need some more stuff. I need some commissions. I need the total commish. So if I only move one step, that means I could go to, I could sell some more stuff, although I don't have much to sell, or I could buy some stuff. If I move five steps, no, 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 actually, this is where I am. I'm going to move one step. Boop. All right. Oh, and this this die went away. Forgot about that. All right. So I'm going to move one step. And I'm going to put this here, which means I've made another gun. All righty. Boop. Not a magic gun, just a regular gun. And. Uh, right. So am I going to sell or am I going to get a commission? I now have two guns. You know what they want in Northbreak? Two guns. And you know, all right, but no, he wants to go to Fargland. If he's going to travel, I want to get ready with a green thing, but nobody wants guns in Windglass or Fargland. Huh. Let's see now. He's played, he, you know, he has two cards that make him want to travel. He hasn't played either of them yet. So chances are very good he's about to travel. 
So I could, but I, mean, I know he's going to travel. He's not going to go to a to Northbreak, which is where I could sell those guns. So, um, but if he does go to Farglin, I could deliver these people to Windglass. Wow. Oh, let's see what to do. No, I guess, I guess, I guess I'm just going to come and buy some stuff at the bazaar and set myself up for the future. So when you come to the bazaar, first of all, or actually you can do both of these in any order you want. And after you've done both of these, you can buy. Now this is rotate once. So obviously that changes the value of everything. This is an interesting one. This is take any one die, flip it to any side, and make it that thing. So if I wanted to buy some armor right now, and I don't care about guns. Hey, I've already got guns. I want armor. I could say, hey, you know what? There's armor for sale. Boom, just like that. And I could buy it for one. Or if I could see that I know there's somebody else who desperately, who, you know, who has a whole bunch of instruments and is about to come over here and sell all the instruments and make a lot of money, I could say, oh, you know what? Um, instruments... Oh, no, actually, instruments would still be worth five, but I could make it worth four. Oh, yeah, this is more about buying. So, what do I want to do? Let's see. I um, already have two guns. If I were to get this Northbreak commission... No, I don't need to go to Northbreak, though. I've already been to Night Poem. I need to go to Wind Glass. You know what? Maybe I should. All right. I Actually, you know what I just talked about? I am going to do. I'm going to go ahead and turn one of these into an armor. Now, you can only mess with one of the dice. Now, I could change the value of things, but I don't want to change the value because I'm now going to spend money. I can buy all these things. I could spend five to buy an instrument. I could spend three to buy a weapon. I could and I could spend one to buy armor. And I could spend one to buy two staffs. There cannot be more than two of anything, but that's a really cool thing. Um, you know, If there are two things here, I could buy two of them for the stated price. So I'm going to buy two staffs, and that's going to cost me one. And I'm going to buy one armor. That's going to cost me one. And things are getting full. And well, you know, Ida can carry stuff, so I'll just give that to Ida to carry. So I've still got room. So that was two bucks I just spent. And I've still got more money. I've still got six bucks. But remember, the money I'm spending is points I'm throwing away, potentially. So do I, I'm not going to spend five bucks for... Am I going to spend three bucks for another gun? No, I am not. I am not going to do that. All right, so I'm done. So, um, I didn't rotate because I liked the prices where they were. I did convert one thing to another thing, and then I bought as much as I wanted. And then at the end of my turn, I re-roll the dice. And so, there are more staffs and more armor for sale. I hardly even rolled those dice. Okay, so that was it for me. And now, here's the thing. I hope, 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 hope he doesn't travel yet. Because if he gives you one more turn, I'll just move one step and... I've got everything I need to make the perfect delivery to Wind Glass. Plus two people, plus a commission. That'll be a very a lucrative trip, even if I no, don't get the leader bonus. All right, so that was it for me. Now let's see what he's got up his sleeve. Um, oh, he's going to travel. Yep, I told you it was coming. Okay, so he, it's like, let's see, boop, 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 he is here. First of all, um, if he had an illuminated die, he would get a commission. He does not, so instead he gets a lantern. That is only two lanterns, which means we know he cannot travel the, the shortcut. He's going to travel the dark road. Now, we check to see if he's going to travel. If he has one or more commission, it is one or more, he will travel. He does not. He is not going to travel right now because he hasn't picked up any commissions. So uh, th this would be this is him saying how he would travel, you know, which um, familiar he would take, stuff like that. But since he does not have any commissions currently, he says, "I'm not traveling. Instead, I'm going to go to the ruins." Or actually, no, he will go to the ruins if he has three or fewer goods. He has three goods. If that weren't the case, he would get a commission. He would get a commission to what is the sword? The sword is north. He would get a commission to Northbreak. But instead, he is going to go to the ruins. Because remember, in these spots, this is replicating, a player standing here could either travel or go to the ruins or get a commission. He, uh, he, he's not going to travel without a commission. He is going to go to the ruins because he wants more goods. And so this is what happens. When any player comes over to the ruins, there's another little mini rondelle. The third rondelle in this game. And um, you move forward on this rondelle based on the number of heroes. You move forward one plus one for every hero or passenger you have. He's got one, so he's going to move forward one, two. Now, if he were a player, that means he would land here and he would get one magic armor or one magic potion. That's what he found. However, he is not a player. 
He is the uh, the trader, and he doesn't care about specific types. So whenever the trader gets a magic item, they get one item and one crystal. We don't do that. We actually get, you know, instead of a regular thing, we get a magic thing. But he just gets a crystal, which are worth points to him at the end of the game. They're not for me, but they are for him. So he went digging, and he got... You could say it was a magic armor, but he just represents all goods just like virtual things. And I guess he knows how to pull the magic out of the thing and turn it into a crystal. All right. And if and the human players, if anybody comes here and they've got a, a lantern, they can spend it to dig deeper. He is going to spend one of his lanterns, and he's going to dig deeper, and he gets two coins. Okay. Which is potentially two more points. You never know. Because you never know exactly how much money anybody's got. You know how much famous they are, but not how much. Are. So that was it for him. He has visited the ruins. All right. And um, he did not get a commission. He did not deliver. That was it. So I've still got time. Still got time. It is my turn. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, folks. Remember, Klingon subtitles. A very important thing happened at the end of my turn. At the end of your turn, after you refill cards and all of that, if you have no more dice in your reserve, that's when you go to your dice discard. You remove one die from the game, you roll the other two, and they go back into your reserve. And I get nothing but ones. Ones, ones, ones. Alrighty. So you can see how this is the timer of the game. Um, you know, eventually this wheel is going to empty out, and then I'm going to lose a different die, and I keep going until I completely run out of dice, do my last three actions, and that's what triggers the end of the game. Everybody gets an equal number of turns, because everybody starts with the same number of action dice. So, you saw the timer in action there. It is my turn. What am I going to do? If I do this action, I will move forward one. I could get a commission. I could explore, etc., etc. And I would put a one here, so I would make another gun. Or, hmm, let's see. If I do a five, then I stand still. But I could use my illuminated, and I could do a commission and some more buying at the shop. I don't think I want to do that. Or I could do a three, make some money, change the wheel, and one, two, three, come back over here and sell some stuff or go to the dark market. I think... It's going to be a one. All right. I'll, oh, shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Sorry. This was uh, actually part of my, you know, this should have come over here at the end of the round. I, I got re-rolled re as well. So there we go. So I've got, so this is what I've done. I'm moving one, but I've got to decide what fills this up. Am I going to craft myself another gun or a staff? Guns are worth more money right now than staffs. Although staffs are about to flip over from being worth one to being worth five. But I saw two things. Am I going to craft a staff? Am I going to craft a gun? And am I going to give myself a three or a one? I, I think having a one is pretty handy. So I just crafted another gun. Boom. Plus guns don't take up very much room. Okay. So that... And they're worth three bucks. Okay. So that was that. I moved forward one and I could either get a commission or I could go to the ruins or travel. And it's interesting. I was, I was, I was wanting to wait for him to trigger the travel. But... I think maybe I'll go, because I've got my commission. Where's my commission? Oh, wait, no, I don't. I haven't gotten my commission yet. That's right, I got all my stuff. Yes, yeah, so I traveled one specifically. I'm not going to travel yet. I'm getting the commission. It was the um, Wind Glass commission. Although, man, this North Break commission is almost perfect for me. I got all these guns, but I'll worry about that later. So that was it. I just traveled one. I did a single action. Now I am ready to go green and get a big payday. Let's see if he's going to make that happen. Um, nope, he is going to travel. And if he hadn't illuminated die, he would get a commission, but instead he's getting a lantern. And now, um, what's he going to do in this space? If he has um, one or fewer commissions, he's going to take a commission. And yep, that's what he needed. That's why he didn't travel before. Oh, and what do you know? This is the symbol for wind glass. All right. So he's got somebody who wants to go to Farglin. He's got a commission to go to wind glass. He can only do one or the other. Um, and right. If he had already had enough commissions, he would have skipped this. And instead he would have um, bought some more uh, goods basically at whatever price they were at. But anyway, so that was it for him. He's done. So now it's just a question of who is going to trigger the trip. I know he's got one more no, he's got three more travel cards because there's two for here and two for here. So three of these five cards are him going to be doing the travel. This is my chance because, hey, if I just move forward one, I'll make yet another, well, I'll make another thing and I come down here and I could trigger the travel or I could do it with the five. And if I do it with the five, then I could use my, and I could do a double thing. I could get a commission. 
<sighs> oh, I could get another wind glass, which wants um, guns. And a good. But it has to be a good that is um, that is for sale. Right, or I forget. Is that for sale or not for sale? Oh, I don't remember what that symbol is. Fortunately, I've got a handy dandy little cheat sheet. All uh, right, which one is it? It's the one that is not for sale. Except that's not on the handy dandy little cheat sheet. I thought it was. Oh, I'll have to look in the rules. But anyway, that's if I do. That's if I visit Icebreak Harbor. Yeah, I for, uh, you know, this is get a basic good, but I think it's one that's for sale. So I can't get a basic book or a potion right now. But okay, that's interesting. Let's think about this. If I just stay still and do a five. Um, right. Oh, and this is what I did last turn. Keep forgetting it. That's why after you're done, you put them over here to remind, and then you move them off there. This is very easy to forget what you're doing. So if I stand still, and I get a commission, and I get a thing, uh, if I get another wind glass, I've got a gun, and I would need a... Oh, I, I, yeah. I could make a big delivery to wind glass. Okay, fine. Let's go crazy. Let's make this the biggest delivery to wind glass you ever saw. So I want to stand still to stay here so I can get a commission and do the wind glass. And to be able to do a double action, I have to do this. So I'm gonna activate this five, which means instead of giving myself another lantern, which means I could take the shortcut, but instead I'm gonna do a double action. And now I have to decide, am I setting myself up for a three or a one? I will set myself up for a three. All right, now here's an interesting thing, by the way. Let's say that this was a three. If I set myself up for another three, that can be a real bummer to be in a situation where no matter what, you, you have to move in a certain direction. You, you, you're limited in what you can do. And depending on the dice, you just might roll nothing but fives all the time and not even be able to stand still. If you are ever in a situation where once you put all three dice into your lock spaces, they're all the same, you can optionally turn them into a one, a two, and a three. So this game always gives you flexibility. Now, that was not the case here, but I'm just mentioning it because that is an important rule to ensure that you um, never... I mean, you are always in control of these dice. These dice are always giving you options. You just know how to use them. So anyway, so... Um, uh, I did this so I could do both. Um, either way, I'm standing still and I am doing three things. I'm visiting the harbor, I'm getting a commission, and we're going on an excursion, folks. Let's uh, do the harbor first. No, let's uh, do the commission first. I'm taking another wind glass commission. So I have done that. And this is a commission that wants potions, guns. All right, next up, let's do the icebreak harbor. Oh, I want a potion. This wants a potion, but I can't because potions aren't for sale right now. Ah! Arr! All right. Shoot. Well, what do I want instead? Uh, musical instruments are the most valuable thing to sell. They take up a lot of space, but what the heck? I'll just take a musical instrument, and as I come back around, I'll sell it to somebody and make some more cash because pretty soon I'm going to have no passengers. So I can barely fit it, even though I don't need it for either of these. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. I'm not going to take that. I can take any for sale. I'm taking another staff. So I've got three staves. Because this one wants two, this one wants one, this one wants a gun. So I'm going to be take, delivering five items. None of them magic, unfortunately, but still, that's going to be great. So I've done this, I've done this, and now it's excursion time. I am not going to go to the ruins, because I am full. We are going to travel yet again. It's time to be a merchant of the dark road once more. I declare to everybody that I am going to win glass. I declare that since I don't have enough, I am going to travel on the regular dark road. And I get another healthy Helperson to come along and join our adventures. If I bring the Cave Dragon... Uh, now, unfortunately, I have no crystals, so I won't be able to activate their powers. But this is just pick up a hero or um, grab any basic good that is uh, for sale. The Thray Cat is copy other dice when you're traveling. The Ice Mouse is get commissions and items. I hate spending time getting commissions, like a whole turn just to get one commission. I'm going to have Mr. Icy Mouse join. Look at that. Hey, buddy. Okay. But that means, since I didn't bring the dragon, it was just going to be my die. And remember, um, he says, oh, you're going to Wind Glass? I'll join you because he wants. He would want to go to either green. So he's going to join. So we're only going to be rolling two dice since I did not bring the cave dragon. Okay. I've uh, made my decisions. He has joined me. Let's find out what happens on the road. It's a scholar's monument. The iconoclast corresponded with both wizards and alchemists, trying to unify their theories into one impossible whole. So apparently we're going to spend the night at the scholar's monument. Let's roll them bones. Whee! All righty. Oh, that was not good. Let's do it actually where you can see. I thought that would be kind of nice, but they couldn't be seen on the green screen. Boop! A six and a one. Hmm. Which die will I take for myself? I think I'll take the six, please. Which means I immediately get a commission 
either from Curse Cairn or from Wind. Oh my God, I can get another Wind Glass, and I'm already, that's where I'm going. This one would. This one wants more stabs. No, I'm already delivering all my stabs, and it. Right, so I'm gonna take. What was it? It was Curse Cairn, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna get a Curse Cairn, which remember. That's the other place I have to go. Very nice. Now, I'm not doing this right now, but I've just set this up for later. So that is what I did at the Scholar's Monument. I did some studies overnight, and it led to another commission. Good on me. My opponent, though, unfortunately, um, never re-rolls. I mean, if this was a human player, they could use the lantern and try to re-roll and get a 1 or a 2 or whatever. But, say la vie, they've got a 1, which means they either lose 2 bucks or they lose a good. Right. Hmm. And uh, this is interesting. I have not had this happen. The rules have a general purpose saying that if there's nothing else telling you what they do, you can choose for them. So I will have them lose two bucks. Because, hey, that's two points. I could be wrong about that. You can check in the uh, you know, Cleon subtitles if that was wrong. But I believe I get to choose in the absence of any choice for them. So he just lost potentially two points. Too bad for him. Uh, he had a very restless night at the Scholar's Monument. Too much chanting, late night chanting. And we have finally arrived at Windglass. Although, right, did he want to go to Windglass or Fargren? Uh, because he's got two different places to go. Oh, no, 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 no. Remember, I remember. Uh, another priority for him is he always prefers um, completing commissions over delivering people. So he joined me at Windglass. We're both delivering to Windglass. Let's do him really quick. Hey, he wants to deliver. Does he have enough? He needs three goods. One, two, three. So he's delivered all those. He just gets six fame. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that was it for him. So he's easy peasy. Me, I'm doing a whole bunch more stuff. I've got two people who wanted to come to Windglass. And actually, boy, I didn't even need that storage. I could have stored everything in my... Look at that. So both of these folks said, finally, we're back home. Hooray. And uh, that gets me two fame per... One, two, three, four. Who's the fame on now? And I keep these as proof later on. Because remember, there was an objective. Wasn't there? Oh, there, there was an objective about, yeah, each unique class. Now, unfortunately, um, that doesn't help me much because these are both the same class. I need to mix it up and deliver different types of people um, to get more points out of my objective. But say, Lobby. All right. So I got four fame out of that. And I am completing two, count them, two, which wants... All of this, all of it, and a gun, right? Yeah, there we go. So I'm delivering all of this business. So that is a one, two, three. That gets me six points. No magic, so I don't get extra. And this one I have two, so that gives me three points. I just got nine more fame. All right. Oops, excuse me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I am super famous. All this stuff is gone. That is me having made a trip to Windglass to great success and great acclaim. Everybody's so impressed by me. And remember, because I was the leader, I have a choice. I can I keep on making non-magic versions of things. If I were making magic versions of things, I could be getting more crystals to have my followers help me. But do I just want another illuminated die? I love those double actions. Or do I want to grab one of these bonuses, which will give me goods and another horseshoe or more? I think I've got enough fame for now. I really need to start focusing on money because it seems like my fame is getting way ahead of my cash here. So having this completed at the end of the game, so I've got four extra bucks in my back pocket, that could be four points at the end of the game. And you know what? I just did two commissions to the same place. So this pays out if I, go, if I do one more commission to win glass before the game is over. So that's pretty attractive, actually. And it, um, you know, and normally, I, you, the only way to get crowns is to come to the dark market and spend money. But I could get this right now, and that's four bucks, as opposed to another action, as opposed to five bucks. And why not take five bucks instead of four? Or do, make magic items, because I keep making these items. You know what? I'm just falling behind on money. I think I just want five bucks. And I took it, and now, if anybody ever wants money again, it's only three bucks. All right. So that was my leadership. Now, the thing is, you haven't seen one yet because I haven't had enough lanterns. But if I'd had three lanterns and I'd taken a shortcut, it might have been the Traveling Casino, where um, you know the penalties are much harsher. And often, you have to get into the higher numbers to get good stuff. So it's basically just the uh, distribution of rewards and penalties and all that changes. Magic items found at the traveling casino. I mean, but have to roll a five or a six. But here's the other thing. There's two other things. You'll notice, because it's a shortcut, the leader 
gets two bonuses, two of these bonuses instead of one. So that's a pretty big deal. But there is a downside. If you are the leader on a shortcut mission, it really runs you ragged. Um, because you, know, you don't know the way, you're, it's very dark, you've used all your lanterns, and so when you eventually run into whatever event it's going to be, everybody else who is following in your wake, they get to take advantage of the fact and that, that, that they were less distracted because you were the leader. And what that means is, you know, so far on these ones, whoever was the leader got to pick the dice first, but on a shortcut, the leader picks the dice last. So if it had come out with that 6-1, then the the glomer on would have gotten the six, and I would have been stuck with the one. So there are big rewards for this, huge rewards that you cannot be taken from you, getting two leadership rewards, but being the last person to take the dice, if you roll, that could be hugely dangerous. Unless you got a special power, maybe, or unless you bring in another familiar that will mean more dice are being rolled, etc., etc. So that's the deal with shortcuts instead of regular travel. And it's a very interesting thing, giving up those lanterns, which remember, also lets you re-roll travel dice. Uh, so shortcuts are dangerous, but hugely lucrative. So that was that. I just made all the points in the world, and I've still got a couple of guns, which, does anybody want to buy two guns? Because guns are selling for three. Um, nope. You can only sell to one person. They want a gun. They want a gun. But you know what? I, on the way, I could stop at the dark market and try to get, let's see, armor and a potion? Nope. Um, armor and a gun? Oh, yeah. If I come to the dark market, spend two bucks, I'll get an armor and a gun. No, I already have the gun. I need the staff. Ah, staff and a book. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I, I got to start either selling stuff or doing more commissions and um, and and the rest of it. But folks, I think I'm going to stop right there because now I think you've seen a little bit of everything that you can find on the Dark Road in Merchants of the Dark Road. If you want to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen, or you can follow the show notes in five, a four, a three, two, one.